This is Kona, and the uh, bear and uh, uh, Tosh are in the apartment. In this video, we're going to go over tips and tricks to help your dog behave on a walk. Now, one of the things I'd like you to notice about her right now is her energy level. She is calm. Most of us, when we get ready to go for a walk, we're all excited. We tell the dog, you want to go for a walk? You want to go, go potty? You want to go potty? You want to go potty, 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 potty? I think that's the word the Guardian uses. And we did a video inside. I, I may or may not have it above this one uh, as kind of a before video. But if you're, the energy your dog carries with it as you leave the door is the energy it's going to carry on the walk. Kona's energy right now is beautiful. It's nice and relaxed, and that's what we're looking for. Now, a couple little tricks. When you go to pick up your leash and your dog gets excited, that is a prime example of what we call classical conditioning. That's Pavlov's dog. So the, <laughs> you pick up the leash. That's kind of cute. Um, you pick up the leash, and then that elicits a response from the dog because immediately after picking up the leash, something desirable is going to happen for the dog, and they start getting more and more excited. Now, excited is an unbalanced state of mind for dogs, and it is not happy. A lot of people confuse excited for happy. But just like us, if you're super duper happy, that's not the time to go do surgery or do something that really requires a lot of attention. You want to be in a calm, balanced state of mind. So one of the tricks I would have the guardian do is instead of narrating, let's go potty. See, we get a little response there. Not say anything like that. Just go pick up the leash and attach the leash and take the dog for a walk. Now that, once you pick up the leash though, the dog is gonna get excited. So we need to mitigate that. So the way we take care of that is practice leashing the dogs up five times for every one time you actually leave your apartment. So you just go through the leashing process and as soon as the dog starts getting excited, you just stop and then go sit down. Now, because you're not planning on taking a dog for a walk anyways, it doesn't matter to you. Normally when we're taking a dog for a walk, we're like, okay, I got 28 minutes, I can walk the dog for 15 minutes and I can still make the phone call and still leave and get to work. And so we get frustrated when the dog doesn't cooperate with us. We put the dog in a position to fail in that situation. So what we want to do, uh, uh, hey, that's good. We're gonna have a uh, visitor coming around down the steps. Oh, so, okay. uh, whoop, are you going down? Or are you just uh, watering? Watering and then going Okay, down. well, we'll, we'll do this in the middle of the video. So you see now the, the energy level is a little bit higher. And this is uh, something we're talking about. We heard the dogs barking inside. We went through a lot of, hey, whoop, sit. Now, if I give a treat for that, that would be rewarding the behavior. So I'm trying to elongate a little bit. So you want at least three seconds clearing before you give a treat. I use that to redirect. So basically, I went through some stuff off camera inside that'll help with that. We're not going to talk about that, so we're going to stick on the, the, the walk. So go through the process of leashing your dog up. Walk to where the leash is. As soon as the dog walks in front of you, like it's like in this situation, as soon as her chest gets in front of my torso, don't say a word. I call this light switch off. Go and sit back down. And then read a little bit, watch, mag watch TV, wait for the dog's energy to calm down completely, then get up and walk to where the leash is again. You'll have to go back and forth several times before the dog figures out and they will stay behind you the whole time. When I get to where the leash is, and I want the guardian to switch over to a straight leash like this, she was using a retractable leash, and these are big strong dogs, you're gonna break them eventually. And the more in front your dog is, the more it thinks it's in charge. And you can lower it a little bit if it's a little bit more comfortable for you. I don't want your arms to go. Um, there you go. All right, so basically, once we get to where the leash is, then I give the dog a directive. Kona, sit. Then I just reach for the leash. When you just reach, the dog's going to get up. So actually, the leash is on a table like this. So you just reach like this and then pull your arm back. And if the dog gets up, stop, tell the dog to sit, and then repeat the process or stop and go sit down. So we want to break down the whole leashing activity into small individual steps. We take away the excitement by not narrating and telling the dog we're going to go potty. Yes. And then we just start reaching. And we reach a little bit further, a little further. When we actually pick it up, at any point the dog gets up, stop and tell the dog to sit. When I do pick it up, I jiggle. I make the clicking sound with the leash end. I want to make it as loud as possible so the dog can practice in the loudest capacity. That way it's normal. It's easy. Then I actually start going like this, and at any point the dog gets up like that, I put the leash back and I wait for it to calm down. It'll take some practice, but within a couple of days, the dog will stay calm throughout the whole process. And also, always make the dog come to you. Never go chase the dog to put it on the leash. And this is my activity. You want to go on it, you better come and follow me on my rules. So now, if we do this properly, by the time we leave the house, the dog's energy is going to be like this. It's going to be a lot easier to deal with. So that's half the battle. The next part of the battle, I'm going to offer a bunch of other tips, and we're going to walk down, and we're going to go on the street and go over this. Uh, but basically, I stopped here. This is a little bit awkward angle, but this gives our guardian a great opportunity to practice self-control. Now, again, for dogs, whoever's in front is in charge. 
What I'm going to ask the Guardian to do is make sure you use, she uses the railing with whichever arm she would like, and I'd like her to walk down the next four or five steps until she gets to the bottom of the stairs. We're going to use these stairs as a good activity to help the dog practice not moving in front of us. So once she gets to the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk, start walking down the stairs, and I'm going to stop short after a couple of steps. Now, you hear the anxiety right there. Uh, my Guardian is moving far away from me. Kona, sit. Focus. Oh. <laughs> You'll get that one on the way down. Kona, sit. Sit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three steps and I'm going to stop short. The dog can't run past me, so I'm going to use the leash to pop and keep the dog with me. Now, I'm also using a martingale collar, and I've applied the special twist of the leash that I showed the Guardian off camera. So I'd like her to use these versus harnesses. Number one, the dog can't pop it off its neck if it's sized properly. Number two, the constriction helps them feel more relaxed. And number three, it just makes it easier for them to stop pulling. Also get a four foot straight leash. This is all the extra leash that happens once we do the added twist of the leash. Now it's still a little bit too much, so I'm gonna wrap it around my hand once. I don't wanna be a tense, but I want it to be a short leash so I can, when I pop and correct it, my timing's gonna be better. If it's a six foot leash, I gotta go this high before it actually starts getting taut. And we do not want to walk the dog with a tense leash. That will make the dog pull more. They have an opposition reflex. It's the worst thing you can do. All right, go to sit. Great check-in. So I want you to vary and chaotically stop two or three times on your way down the steps so the dogs understand when we're going down the steps, my job is to pay attention to the human. Normally, our dog is paying attention to everything but the human. She sees that treat and I'm gonna let her have it right now. Good job, Kona. All right, so go ahead and if you can walk backwards that way, and we're gonna go out on the street. Well, actually, we'll, go, we'll use the shade right here. Just go ahead and walk back into the shade there. All right, so now uh, a lot of people, when their dog gets out in front of them, this is what they do, they pull the dog back. You see how she's pulling with me. So what I wanna do is I wanna teach the dog that when it gets to the end of the leash to turn around and come back to me automatically. And I'm not gonna do it through pulling because that's working against what I want to do. Now I'm going to undo the, the special twist of the martingale for this part of it. You can do it with the martingale, but I find it a little bit more effective if the dog has a little bit more leash. Now I'm going to do it right here because I think the dog's going to be more motivated, you can stay right there, to walk towards where the guardian is. Now before I do this, I have a, lead, a treat in my hand. Now to get the dog in the heel position, I do a little bit of a pirouette, sit, sit. Well actually I'll show you something else first and then I'm going to do the, the lunging. So basically what I want to do, and this is going to be better if you're, if you're perpendicular to us, which side do you walk her on, your right side or left side? Um, usually, well, it rotates. Okay, so what I would say is give each of the two main dogs, we have a blind dog, she can, whatever side is better for you, but for, the, for Kona and Bear, I want them to each to have a specific side that is exclusively their side. That way if I don't know where to go, I just go left or the right. So for her, do you want to? Left side. The left side, all right. So I'm gonna to change to buy, uh, the leash on my left side. And what I wanna do is I wanna teach her, well actually I could do it with the leash. This is actually an exercise that would be better to be done outside, but I wanted to do this in one shot. So what I wanted the dog to do is come into a heel position here. So to do this, I'm gonna just leave the dog over here, then I do a U-turn, and then I'm gonna raise it, make her sit, sit, Kona, sit, sit. Now I turn, and I'll repeat the process. A little bit easier that time. I turn again, repeat the process. When you're doing this, if you notice that I'm having this on the seam of my pants or behind my butt, don't ever give it to the in front of the dog, otherwise you're teaching the dog to move in front of you. You wanna go that, you like doing this one again? This is a better camera angle. She might be made for Hollywood. Now that's a little sloppy, she's going inside, but it's okay at first. Let's do one more. Now if you have a dog that's really difficult, sometimes they won't follow you, she's doing a great job. But if you have another dog, what you have to do is you might have to move the step that's closest to, uh, to the dog backwards. So I'm going to show you here. And you see now she's going automatically into a sit. So this is just, this is the setup, and I would have you do this inside at different times just to help her feel comfortable. So when you say, eventually say heel, she does a circle and sits behind you. All right, so the next step is to teach the dog not to lunge on the leash. Come here, spirit. I'm going to put it on the left side because that's where mom wants you to be. I'm going to put my treats on the right. All right. So, come here. So, what I'm going to do is when the dog passes my torso, kind of like when I was talking the steps here, I'm just going to stop and plant my feet like a tree. Sit. I was putting tension on the leash. Don't do that. Uh, 
Conan. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a treat ready and I'm gonna make a kissing sound like this and get her to come back to me. And that's why we already have that other movement that I just showed you and you're gonna leave the dog in that same movement. Right now she doesn't have it well enough. I'm not gonna ask for that. I'm just gonna ask her to come back to me. But what this teaches the dog is when I get to the end of the leash and I get it, it goes bulk, I just turn around and come back to the human and get a treat. After a while, you don't even have to ask the dog. It just boom, it comes back. And after a while, it starts looking at you to make sure it doesn't get to the end of the leash. Are you ready? Get another treat ready to go. Now, if she's conditioned, this is where we go. So right now, normally we would be walking this direction, uh, but this is a good little exercise you can do in your courtyard because this is like uh, the appetizer for the main meal of being the walk. Well, in here there's a fence, so there's no other dogs or squirrels, there might be a couple other dogs in the complex, but the idea is we do a warm-up session, just like if we're gonna do athletic activity, we stretch first. So this is kind of her warm-up calisthenic. Then when we're walking, we're actually gonna, every time she passes in front of us, we're gonna ask her to come back. Now that can get really frustrating walking that way. So again, I look for ways to take the pressure off. What we're gonna do for that is instead of actually going and starting our walk, I like the garden and we're not, well actually we can go ahead and show it this way. Um, well, I'll just describe it. it. Won't be the most exciting footage. What I would have you do, we're in an apartment, we're kind of close to downtown Santa Monica. What I would have the daughter do is once she comes out the steps, walk to the corner, maximum to the corner. And as soon as the dog walks in front of you, you stop, make her come back to you, you go back, or, and then when you get to the corner, you're going to turn around and you're going to go back to the end of the property line over here. So when you go back and forth like three or four times, and then once at, and you're, what you're finding is the dog's going to actually start paying attention to you. Once that's the case, then you can start your regular walk. You again helped her warm up. So you can do the warm up in here uh, with the heel. Outside is going to be a little bit more difficult than inside, the lure position, um, like this. And eventually you want her facing front, but for now it's okay. And then you warm up a little bit out here, and by the time you go on your actual walk, the dog is now kind of paying attention to you, because you've just given her like eight or ten treats. Well, maybe she has more than she's going to give me. And dogs are very motivated by treats, including you. Uh, one last thing, oh, well, a couple last things. The guardian here has three dogs. I recommend, and she right now walks the dogs one at a time. That's one of the reasons why I want the dogs to have an outside, so you can walk with two dogs at the same time. And I don't want to pull the dog into position because that's going to activate the opposition reflex. We want to teach the dog to walk with a loose leash. Now these are not teaching your dog to walk with a heel uh, or a heel. That's something that hopefully we can set up a future session and actually work exclusively on loose leash and heel training. This is just going to keep the dog from pulling ahead of us and paying closer attention to us and make it easier for us to put it in a heel position. Mark, right, can we heel one more time before we end this video? These are tips of, well, let's, let's do that again and we'll hold you in position with the second tree. Come here. Sit. These are tips and tricks you can use to keep your dog from pulling on a leash and teach it to walk next to you.